Blackmagic Design just updated DaVinci Resolve to version 20.2, and check this out. Under the clip menu, Audio Operations, there's a new Ripple Delete Silence option. Click it, and you can adjust the volume threshold slider while viewing a red highlight preview on the timeline for what this affects. Click Remove, and you've just saved so many hours manually editing out that dead air. But I'll tell you, what I'm most excited about, the edit page track header is all new. There's new source patches, the old auto select is completely gone, and the new sync locks make ripple trimming while preserving sync easier than ever. So here's my favorite updates to DaVinci Resolve 20.2. Sync lock. Sync lock is the new ripple on or ripple off button. When sync locks are on, meaning they're bright white, ripple trims maintain sync across all layers of clips on the timeline, including long music or room tone that may be started before the trimming point. It actually does this automatically by adding a cut point to long or intersecting clips on other tracks right at the moment you begin to trim. This also means that clips on other tracks get trimmed without ever needing to manually select them, all for the sole purpose of keeping sync with multiple layers of timeline clips. An exception to this auto blade rule on all tracks is if the clip is short, like less than one second away from the trim point. This is new and brilliant, and it really removes the fear of messing up your timeline when you go trim. And of course, if you don't want to do this and ripple trim to blade a cut to preserve sync automatically, just disable the sync lock for that track. However, afterward, I would probably suggest re-enabling it later for safety. Just know it's your ripple on and ripple off button. Shift clicking the sync lock icon disables all, and then shift clicking again enables them all. To solo sync locks, option or alt click it, and then option or alt click again to invert the selection. Maybe a more intuitive way is just with the mouse cursor, you just swipe drag over the sync locks to enable and disable them, or you could even set a keyboard customization. There's a command called enable disable sync locks for all tracks. I personally set it to the tilde key and disable the undo function so I can turn them all on and off at an instant. Please let me know down in the comments as we go through this list here what you're most excited about with version 20.2. AI Cinematic Haze. On the color page, the new cinematic haze effect mimics atmospheric haze with using the built-in AI depth map to separate your foreground from your background easily. Keyframe Tray Actions Toolbar. So in the curves mode, you can now click a button in this new toolbar to ease your keyframes instead of only using a right click option. Sony RAW Image Support. So I'm a Sony guy. I love that we can debayer the RAW Sony photos and time lapses directly inside of DaVinci Resolve. Automatic Trim Editor Viewer. So when you enter dynamic trim mode with this button, or you could actually just hit the W key on the keyboard to turn your JKL keys into real-time trimming controls, the traditional source timeline viewer is temporarily replaced with the big single trim viewer showing the previous and next side of a cut. Now, I love this, but if you don't, there's actually a new user preference under editing to disable the single viewer trim edit view. Auto select. Now the old auto select button is gone now, and the new auto select button is this new red column. It's similar, but it's not in charge of ripple trimming anymore. That's what the sync locks were for. Now it's important to remember this reddish orange track header highlight has nothing to do with source patching at all. Source patching is blue, which we're going to get to in the next section. So what does auto select actually do? Well, it tells Resolve, hey, pay attention to me if it's on and red, or don't pay attention to me if it's off and grayed out. Like maybe you want to place a cut across all the layers on your track, but not the music track. Just disable the auto select for the music track, hit command or control B to make a cut. You can see what it does. Now it also helps make selections for things like copying and pasting to a different track. For instance, if you copy this clip for video one and want to paste it to another area on video two, after copying it, if you option or alt click the track header for V2, it'll paste directly to that track. Now, if you shift click video one afterwards, it'll re-enable all auto selects for all tracks. Auto select also works with match frame. So match frame matches the timeline frame to the source viewer. So you can just see what else is available on the same clip. Selection follows playhead. This is actually now under the timeline menu and across under the video category. It places an orange selection on individual clips as they intersect the playhead. In and out range selections. So this is really useful if you wanna mark a range with an in point and then go to an out point and then you copy the clip and then you clear the marks and you paste it to a new location. It's a good way to take a big chunk of your edit and paste it somewhere else. Auto select controls edit cut point selection when you use the keyboard like hitting V to select an edit point. It's gonna select the lowest track edit point. 
clip selection using the keyboard shortcut shift V. And so basically this is like selection follows playhead that I showed where it puts an orange selection box around it. It's just, this is the manual method. So if you wanna hit shift V, you can use it to select a clip and then nudge it around with things like the comma or period key. Just like sync locks on the auto select, if you shift click, it will enable or disable them all as well as option or all clicking is gonna solo or invert your selection. And probably my favorite to turn auto selects on and off is just to swipe drag with the mouse cursor. Source Track Selector. The Source Track Destination Selector is now blue. It's a clear indicator to allow you to target where a source clip from the source viewer or a bin will land on the timeline with either using one of three things, a, a shortcut key like Insert Edit F9, a drag to the timeline with the overlay controls on the timeline viewer there, maybe do an overwrite edit that way, or simply clicking the timeline toolbar buttons to perform an insert, overwrite, or replace edit. All three of these options pay attention to the blue source patching destinations. Now, if you want to edit video from a clip that also has audio, just deselect the blue audio destination button and you'll only edit video to the timeline. In the past, it was actually an outlined orange box and now it's blue and it follows the color scheme of the blue source timeline for those of you that like to review really long clips in the timeline view, kind of like Avid. If you blinked and missed it, this timeline source view was new this year too and amazing. Pro tip, you can actually tap Q on the keyboard to toggle the source timeline, the blue side, and the edit or record timeline side, the, the orange side. Just remember the blue source box only deals with editing from source down to the timeline. Swiping on source destination is a little bit different. You actually hold down command or control if you wanted to, for instance, disable some of your audio tracks. To move the video track destinations up and down, use command shift up and down arrows. And then if you wanna move the audio track destinations up and down, just use command and option up and down arrows. Now to reset the default with a custom keyboard shortcut, actually set escape key, the escape key for reset track selectors. That's a new command. So you can get everything back to ground zero. 26 hour timeline views. So if you ever get footage that was filmed over the course of like a full day and use a timeline to create a sync map, ideally with timecode, you can now see the full timeline. Detach synced audio. So under the timeline menu, audio, you can now detach synced audio from the video to make it easier to bundle up and send or media manage without the video to turn over to another sound engineer. Flatten retimed multicam clips. So if you're done switching angles with your multicam, you can commit to flatten the clip and you'll actually keep the speed changes, which just makes it easier to deal with for finishing workflows. Custom guides are better and in Fusion. Now, not only are custom colors a thing with the new guides by right clicking to change a color, but you can also drag and manipulate the viewer guides in Fusion page of Resolve 20.2. Skim playhead updated. So there's the hold or tap C to update the playhead to the cursor. Now this actually also works on the color viewer as well. So no more clutching down hard on that mouse to move your playhead around. More faster stuff. So the transcriptions are faster, the surface tracker is faster, and the AI voice convert analysis is also faster if you're on a Mac. So I'm Chadwick, this is Creative Video Tips. Thanks so much for watching and because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.